Hey everyone, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. Today I wanted to show you my fabric postcard collection and other miscellaneous items. Some of these I've received from you guys, some from patrons, some from swaps I've done in general, some from swaps I've joined online, and some from Instagram swaps. I also saved some beautiful cards that were either handmade or just ones that I really liked. I have a couple little random things, uh, my mug rugs that I just made, and these are fabric postcards that I made in the past. They're either ones that I really wanted to keep for myself or they're the early ones that are too thick or too small to mail out. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just a little bit smaller. I could mail them just the way I mail them. I would have to fold over the little clear sleeve and I just didn't like doing that. So let me show you the ones that I've saved for myself just to get them out of the way. I showed you this one recently. It is from the fabric of my daughter's quilt. The first one I made. Here is my glass bowl with two jingle bells in it for whatever reason that I like to keep them in for now at least. I had to save a cardinal for myself. I really like this one. I was just fusing down the little one inch squares and then I made the flower and I put that button on it and that just changed it up right there. So if I take the button off, I should be able to mail it out. I have no idea what's underneath it. I made to do a little repairs to it, but again, it's narrower and shorter. It's a four by six and I like mine four and a half by six and a half now. Then I made this one. It's on that minky type fluffy fabric, but if you put an iron on it, it just squishes it and it no longer has all the little 3D polka dots that were on it. Too small. Fun applique. I'm a little disappointed because there was more water down there that I cut off because I needed to get it to be four by six and it would have been a little cuter otherwise. Another too small, just playing with scraps. Scraps. I tried a little Dresden. Scrappy American flag. And I just like this apple fabric. I wanted to have one for myself. Same thing with these little mice on the old school ornaments with the way the colors and stuff are. I did keep the chemistry one and I also kept one from the outer space that I just recently did these and I really like them when I hang them up I'm going to also hang up these two mug rugs I might just hang them in here really soon I just need to do the little repairs that I mentioned where I didn't get it stitched down so once these are fixed I will hang these up also Christmas one I made for 2021. I love that tree and just the freeform craziness of it. So I kept one of those. A while back, I was making a little fun things that you can decoupage on this little painting type board, whatever it's called, that picked up at the Dollar Tree. So I did a little scrappy tree, just a bunch of scraps. And then someone went above and beyond and made the little decorations up here and added them on and put a little tree down. So they did much more than I did. Definitely worth keeping. This one had a little fabric postcard in it, but unfortunately something in the mail department ate it up. And this is what I've told you guys before that you have to be careful when certain things go through the mail. This was in an actual envelope. So this person did nothing wrong. Something through Instagram that I swapped with them and it went through the mail and for whatever reason, the machine ate the envelope and tore it up. But thankfully it saved a little bit of scrappiness to the card. So it's all tucked up inside here where it's all folded and then pressed down and then a little note on the inside. So I thought that was really sweet. And even though it's been chunked up, I'm going to save it. I'll just go through these cards real quick. I have a few of the scrappy ones. That's a lot of fun. It's fun when you guys use a tutorial like that of mine or one you've seen somewhere else and then send me something of it. But sometimes the cards, even if they're not handmade, like this one is from Bergeon. It's been around since 1907, so they make really nice greeting cards. This one is handmade. 
This was an Easter one, so it's a fabric postcard, but it's attached to a regular card. So that's got to go into my collection. Now this one is purchased, but I really like it because it has the watercolor and the flamingo. And I love that the flamingo's got a little bit of purple and a little bit of orange in there. So that's got to be saved. A friend that I chatted with through our blogs for many, many years sent this inside a card. It's never made it onto a Christmas tree. I don't know. It just got stuck in with the homemade cards. So I make sure that he's always got a home. Here's a fun card. Put some buttons on it. This came in an envelope. This would not go through the mail very easily. But it survived with the buttons, so thank goodness everything made it. So sometimes the buttons will either tear the paper or get broken when it goes through the machine, so you have to be careful. This one was lots of fun with the little bird houses. I'm not... I, I don't want to own a bird. I don't care for a bird as a pet, but I love to watch them in the wild. And I love bird houses. I love the quirky ones that people make. I love just the basic wooden simple ones, all handmade. Now this was a fun card. There is nothing on the inside. It had a charm square that was attached in here by a couple little stickers. I thought that was really smart, so I saved that. I want to make them like this. I just haven't done that yet, but that would have been really fun for Valentine's Day or make it as a tree and put it on this way for Christmas. I thought that was just a fun stamp on there and it has a little bit of blue ink pad all the way around. So this is a Christmas one that was sent to somebody in a package where they purchased a bunch of Christmas cards and it was sent back to me as one of my Christmas cards. And this is when I realized that I really like to do the strips of fabric like that versus the total chaos, which I kind of like that too. This was brilliant to make the ornament with the salvages. See, there's no fabric, it's just the fun colors. And then it was stitched down to the card. So here are the ones that I recently received for my birthday. This one is, again, a store-bought Hallmark, but it has the felt flowers on it that I really like, and then the handmade ones. Okay, so let's look at the actual fabric postcards. Now remember, some of these are from you guys, some are from swaps. I've done several swaps now, and sometimes people just message me on Instagram and say, hey Robin, I see you'd love to make fabric postcards. Do you wanna trade some with me? And I'm like, okay, I don't mind. I always have plenty, I love to send them out. It's fun because you get to see a lot of different styles. Just a nice scrappy version. These are all layered up. This is a piece of denim, so it's a great way to use up your random fabrics. One for the beautiful autumn or fall season. I love, I don't know why, I just, I love Dresdens. Not just like basic everyday old school type Dresdens, but when you add a little mini Dresden like this and it just kind of brings forth the card and this fabric is really beautiful. And then you can just use a fun fabric. This one is sewing related, block by block and stitch by stitch. Easter with the sewn hearts from the sewing machine all the way around, whoops. And this one has a little uh, charm on it made with love, a little heart. This is, hope oh, you can see the back. This one has batting. So this is actually all fabric. See, more birdhouses. I love this fabric. And then it has this on the back. Guess you can guess when I receive that. It's a Christmas one. And I like that it has like Christmas, Christmas. And then it has more like the palm trees over here. So it's a little bit of everything. One with cupcakes for my birthday. This one's crinkly. This one's from Australia from a swap I did online. So that's Australia. Or that's Australia. That's Australia. And this 
is something I really like. Someone sent this to me, but I really love to do the flowers like this with just some freeform petals. You put that little center in. I put the little button on and made it to the point where it wasn't going to be easy to mail. Well, I mean, I can mail it. It would just cost more, and that kind of defeats the purpose for me. I like to mail these in the clear envelope for just the price of a stamp. But I love how this is all pieced. It's the same fabric, but it's pieced all the way through, and then the flowers on top. It's a fun scrappy one with words. I love this little miniature pineapple block. This has actual binding on it. Did some stitching on the back. If you've been with me for a while, you've probably seen all of these, but these are all the ones that I'm gonna to try to decide where I wanna hang them up and how I wanna hang them. Here's one for St. Patrick's Day. Chicken with a little piece of lace. I thought that was fun. And the card wasn't quite big enough, so she just added a little extra bit up there and it worked all out in the end because with a fabric postcard, everything works. So maybe you have some of these little iron on things. A lot of us have them in our stash from ourselves or from our grandmothers or something. You can turn that into an Easter card. She even used the little bunny as a fabric stamp. So this one definitely came inside a regular envelope. I believe this one actually came from Russia. I know this one came from Russia. It's got the little cross stitch egg on it. A little egg on the back. I've swapped with people all over the world and I think it's just so fun. This is someone else that watched the same tutorial that I did and they actually made a better jellyfish than mine. You can see the back from New Jersey. So it's one of those things is when I make the first one and I'm like, oh, okay, well, instead of making 20 at a time, I should have made just one, figured out how I wanted to do it and then went from there. So it's a fun Christmas. A little bit of the, I believe these are the hourglass blocks. So if you have leftover blocks, you can go ahead and just, these are just appliqued right down. Just stitch down. Snowman. Snowman. And they can be any size. If you're going to mail them in a different type of an envelope or send them with a package or something, you can go ahead and make them any size you want. They don't have to be four and a half by six and a half. That just fits into the clear envelope and mails for the cost of a stamp. It's one of my favorites. I like the layering technique, the way it's off to the side and all the machine buttonhole. It's nice and stiff, stamped on the back. I actually wrote their name and when I received it, sometimes they don't have it on it and I started writing people's names down. Mountains over in Washington. The Halloween. I think this might have been from one of the online swaps. Nice, fun, layered flower. This reminds me of the punches. I have one for the, the hexagon EPPs, but I know they have flower ones, so you just pull the handles down. And I think about that every time I see this card. So you can just add some appliques down to some fun fabric. You don't have to work too hard at these. You can just use scraps and just kind of build them up. This one has a lot into it, all those little itty bitty strips. They are barely the width of my finger, some of them. You can add a little bit behind it to, okay, so this is denim. This is applique down, but this is reverse applique with some batting or something floofy underneath to make it three dimensional. This one came from Russia. There's my only cotton and steel fabric I've ever had. So a nice salvage, because I love salvages. If you've been here for a while, you remember I had that issue with the overabundance of snails in my backyard that I was counting them. And for several days in a row, I pulled out over a hundred snails and sent them on to a better place. So it wasn't the same ones I was picking out every day after every day. So this is sent to memorialize that cross my fingers. I do have snails still, but now it's more of a regular normal amount 
and I'm not being overrun. There's a fun one where you can just add some little extra bits here and there. And it doesn't have to be fancy. See, this one just did some hand stitching. So the scraps on almost sort of at a, well, they're at an angle, but not quite diagonal. Do a little hand stitching or machine sewing and you're all set. Do the same thing and add some applique for whatever holiday we're coming up to. Or maybe you have, now this looks like someone machine embroidered it, but it's not. This is an iron-on patch that they used and just added it on. And they did some of the stem and leaf down here with the machine stitching. And I thought that was brilliant. I have a lot from the same person because we swap fabric postcards back and forth regularly. This one is from Texas. That was fun with some hand embroidered on top for the for the for the cacti or the cactus leaves. Simple Robin loves purple, so we get a nice scrappy purple one. This one has the petite calf square triangles from Alaska. There's this one. This one, it was a pattern from someone where they were, I, I've seen it on Instagram and I thought it was really fun with all the different colors. So it's a whole bunch of little squares stitched down on point. This one's actually from Florida. It's one of my favorites. All those little pieces. It's my recent birthday one with the butterfly. This one reminds me of like waves and the ocean and the sand and stuff. It's very well quilted. It's more of like a mug rug, but I'm considering it a fabric postcard because of the size. And then the one I just received for my birthday. So I have a nice little collection going. I'm very pleased with how many I have. I think it's really fun. It's going to keep building and building. I just don't know how I'm going to display it. Now, somebody suggested this blue tack stuff and I totally forgot about it. I saw that at Walmart at one point in a different name that it's, it's this little putty type stuff and you put it behind posters and it can hold up to one pound. You can pay more money and get something that's gonna hold more, but these don't weigh a pound. So it should be able to hold those up with four little bits of putty. And then I can peel it off. It's not supposed to damage the wall. Sometimes the blue one will leave a little mark on the wall, but a lot of times you can just rub it off. And there are white and orange and other different colors. So I can always just get the white. I have one coming from Amazon to test it out to see how I like it. Uh, it's, it's the Loctite brand versus the Blue Tech, mostly because it had a lot of good reviews and the price was uh, very reasonable and there was more little pieces. It's already cut up into like 80 little pieces. So we'll see, I might even be able to cut each piece in half and get that much more. I don't want to skimp on it, but I also don't want to put up a big chunk of piece if it only needs a little bit. The plan is to put it in the hallway but I might just spread them out all over the rooms here, a little bit here, a little bit there, put them in different places. I don't really know yet. I usually hang my stockings in the hallway, so that would have to change. But I'm not going to stop sending them and I'm not going to stop collecting them. I just might keep changing how I display them. And that's fine too. I can display them 12 different ways in the house and it'll still be fine. But that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the different postcards I have and hopefully they inspired you to make some of your own. I have this flowered one that can go out to one of you guys. Your code word for today will be purple plaid. And if you use that in your comment, then I will comment below it after I choose a random one. Sometimes I choose them just by the first comment. Sometimes when I wake up, whoever put one at the closest time, maybe I like the time. Maybe you posted your comment at, at 1.11 in the morning or the afternoon. So your comment posted at 1.11. So maybe I just like that. Or you commented at 1.234, so I might choose that comment. Or I let the random comment generator and whoever uses purple plaid in their comment to this video will get pulled through there and they will pick one random person to win it. I've decided I'm going to do it within the first day or two 
because if I wait until several days later, people don't always go back and check. So I want to let you know ahead of time that I'm going to choose from this video and you will be getting this fabric postcard if your comment is chosen. I will reply to your comment and I'll say, hey, congratulations, you won the fabric postcard. Please send me an email. If you go down into the description box, there's a little doobly-doo down there, I have an email for you to contact me at. It's the rsislandcrafts at gmail.com. That is the one that I use for correspondence. The RS Island at Hotmail is only for my PayPal. So you'll see one listed down below there that says, hey, if you want to chat with me, use this email. So if I choose your name and I leave a comment saying you won, then you'll send me your mailing address. So thanks for hanging out with me while I went through all my fabric postcards. If you sent me one and you don't see it here, don't fret. I probably have tucked it away somewhere and I just didn't find it to put it in my little glass bowl yet. As I start tidying up more in the other room, I'll probably found, find more. I did find five handmade cards that weren't in this container. So don't worry, it's here somewhere. I've probably already sent you a thank you for it, so you will have known that I received it. So thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Purple plaid.